bacteria are all around us. And most of the bacteria are actually harmless to humans. A few are even essential for us to live. They tend to be highly adapted to their favoured environment, be this in the soil, in the water, on the surface of plants and animals, or even inside them. It's not really surprising considering how long they've been on the planet and how short their average lifespan is. The massive number of generations any living thing couldn't really help but evolve to adapt to their environment. Those bacteria that live inside animals for all or even part of their life cycle in general don't wish to seriously damage their hosts, since if they do, they're threatening their own existence or that of their offspring by in turn reducing the chance of their host to survive and reproduce. What this does tend to mean is that a harmless bacteria that lives inside a rabbit is unlikely to survive inside a lion. However, there may be some bacteria that are harmful if they find their way into an incidental host, one that can survive in, but not one that they were ideally adapted to. In this case, they may cause severe damage to the host before moving on to a new one. This brings us to humans. There are a lot of bacteria that are ideally adapted to living inside us, most notably in the stomach and the large intestine. Some of these synthesize vitamin K, others protect against inflammation of the bowels. It's even possible that our attempts to control harmful bacteria combined with a change in our diet may have had a negative effect on these symbiotic microbes, leading to food allergies and other complications. So why are there so many apparently harmful bacteria around? There are two key factors here. First is that humans, compared to most other animals on the planet, haven't been around for anything like the time that the majority of the other animals have been on the planet, and certainly not in large numbers. This means that bacteria have only relatively recently come into contact with humans and have yet to fully adapt to us. The second factor is human population, the growth of which has been so dramatic that bacteria haven't really had to worry about harming the host as the potential number of new hosts was always multiplying, so all they had to do was find their way onto a new one before the old one died. This brings us to the question, how do harmful bacteria actually enter the human body? Well, generally the skin provides a watertight layer that the vast majority of bacteria can't penetrate whilst it's still intact. However, if the skin is cut, this does give the bacteria a chance to enter into the body. But the immune system is actually quite well geared up to fighting attack entering that way. So unless the system is completely overloaded, such an entry is not normally going to be successful in the long term. However, there are other ways round the skin barrier. For instance, where the skin is thin or even non-existent. Things like the eyes. Now here, blinking in tears with an antibacterial solution actually help them reduce the chance of successful entry and the surface cells are ready to repel an invasion. In the ears, we have a coating of earwax which prevents bacterial intrusion into the inner part of the ear. And the nostrils and mouth and throat, again, are coated from mucus and saliva to deter entry. But these actually do lead other ways into the body. Into the stomach, where this highly acidic content kills most of the bacteria. However, those present in animal meat that hasn't been properly cooked are more likely to survive than bacteria from other sources due to their origin. Now, airborne bacteria, if they make their way down the throat and make it into the lungs. Here, there's a massive surface area for the bacteria to penetrate. So whilst the body's immune system is on alert, it's dispersed over a very, very large area, meaning the bacteria can get established before they're attacked. The body tries to filter them out before they get that deep into the lungs. Finally, bacteria can make it into the body through excretory and reproductive organs. Due to sexual activity, this is an ideal entry into the body since they can pass from one host to another. However, generally the acidic conditions here make bacterial life difficult, added to the issue that they can be heading against the flow. So as you see from all of these locations present areas for bacteria to enter into the body, they're also most prone to common infections as the bacteria generally continue to live and reproduce in the areas where they enter the body. So that's an introduction to bacteria.